Hi everyone, this is Nikki from Polka Doodles. Just going to get my camera just a little bit straight. Um, so I thought I'd do this little video. Um, it has been absolutely ages since I did um, a colouring video with alcohol markers. Um, and um, I just kind of, it, it's really because my hands these days aren't great. They get quite shaky and stuff and um it's just years of abuse i think with my hands so um anyway i thought for a change i'm gonna grab my copics get my copics out and we're gonna do some alcohol marker coloring um so i am not the most amazing alcohol colorist out there there's loads of people that are just phenomenal but um sometimes i feel like it can be very overwhelming for people i know with the amount of um pre-colored digital stamps we actually sell at polka doodles that there are equally if not more people out there that actually either don't like coloring don't have time for coloring or don't have confidence in their coloring so i kind of thought this this was an ideal opportunity just to kind of do like a bit of a tutorial and I kind of don't have time to sit here for a whole day colouring one piece of artwork. Some of you might do, and that's fantastic if you do. But this is hopefully going to be a nice speedy um, way of showing you. So anyway, let's crack straight in. So this isn't going to be, I'm going to try and make this as short as I possibly can. So I'm going to colour this image, which is actually free. So this is currently in a free little bundle that I created for you which is called Winnie Heroes. And there's actually three digi stamps in there for you to color. If you like the pre-colored ones or you prefer those, the six of those, I did three in a darker skin tone and three in a light skin tone. So we're gonna color this. Um, but first of all, I, as I said, I am gonna be using my Copic markers today, um, which you won't have seen me use for absolutely ages because generally now I tend to use watercolors because they're easier on my hands. Um, so those of you that know me from my days of being on creating craft and TV and kind of colouring and kind of going through it all with you there, you know, you this will be very familiar. And basically what I always do is um, I actually have colour charts. So the first thing, if you don't have this already made up, your own, not anybody else's, not photocopied, not printed, you need to put some work in and create this yourself because when you lay this marker down onto a piece of paper it will look completely different to um, a different piece of paper so it very much depends on what you what you're going to color on as to how that color is going to come out because every piece of paper is different or every type of paper is different i should say so i always um prepare all mine on this I, I color chart mine on the same paper and i actually color on the same paper and i do swatches on the same paper so you know you you kind of need to prepare if you want to color something really really well you need to put a little bit of preparation in beforehand and i've literally spent even though this is a little simple image i've spent probably about 20 minutes before i even started this picking my colors and deciding what was going to work so um, I created this chart myself. You can get loads of them from online. Uh, Copic have their own, I believe. I, I don't know. But this this is kind of what I follow. I've put them into groups and into colours. And it's so important you do this because the num it's very easy to assume that numbers are, con con numbers are sequential, i.e. if E30 will be darker than E29, but as you can see, it isn't. And I'm not going to get into the whole colour chart thing with Copic and everything. I'm not a Copic tutor. I haven't done Copic training. Um, there are people out there that dedicate their crafty life to doing that. So I am not going to do that. But I'm, I'm going to show you what I do. So the first thing I've done today is I kind of like looked at my image and I thought, right, okay, I need on here. It's a fairly simple image to colour in, but I need skin tone. I need hair. And I need her clothes. So that's three sets of colours that I'm going to concentrate on. And what I always try to do is not overcomplicate everything. So the first thing is I'm going to actually pick the skin tone colours. 
Now, because it is ages since I've used my Copic, so hand on heart, it's probably 18 months since I've actually picked these up properly to colour an image in properly like today. So I actually just um, swat, this is what I call swatching. So I just literally picked up colours using my chart. So using this, I kind of picked out the colours in here that I thought were going to work. So you kind of want like your palest tones here, but these to me look very peachy, these colours. And that isn't really a, a colour palette. I, I'm not a peachy kind of colour palette person. I like more of the kind of um neutral tones here so these are very warm colors and these are very cool colors and these these are even cooler these are actually a little gray um so i prefer working in these but i wanted to go into these to kind of pick out my skin tones so anyway uh i don't want to go on too much so basically i color swatched these out here so that's those first five colors that i picked and they are very very warm colors um, and then I actually decided that I would go for like three darker sets within that sort of similar range. And you can see that from that peachy tone of E2, E02, you know, by the time you get up to E11, you know, we're, we're going into the brown kind of arena, but it's still very warm. So then I decided that I didn't really like those colours. So, um, or I did, but I wouldn't maybe use all of those. So I actually came down here and started going into the more neutral browns and, and kind of um, more earthy tones. And, you know, you can see here, I've had three different goes with these. And literally all I do is I actually colour, put the next one down, I think it's going to match, try and blend them together to actually find out what works and what doesn't. You know, and in here, you can see again, I ended up with quite uh, E51. Although it looked great on my chart, actually, in reality, that's come out a little bit peachier than the E30. So that's not good. That needs dropping out of that blend. And this is my working progress. And then in the end, on the fourth go, I kind of ended up over here. And I actually quite like these shades. And then to keep it really simple, I decided that we would colour a hair blonde. So again, I kind of went over into the yellows, but I decided yellow reds rather than, you know, like the yellows on their own, which are, are a bit harsh for me. So out of these, again, you know, yellow eight, uh, YR82 is completely different in tone to these three colors here. And then I've actually picked out some greeny blues here, some really nice turquoises, which are gonna be for our scrubs. And so this is the color palette that I actually chose. Um, so always do that on a spare piece of paper and always work on another piece of paper underneath. And I'll give you a reason for that. If you actually notice, um, if you can, I don't know whether you can, uh, it's hard to tell. If you, if you work just on a single piece of paper like this, I'm on a black desk here and this color here is if I work with one piece of paper underneath and then slide this one I'm hoping you can see it on the camera I don't know if you can but because the paper is slightly transparent even though this is a heavyweight this is a 160 gram paper if I actually push that underneath my colors here you do actually see the line and so this looks slightly gray and this is actually more brilliant white so kind of always work on two sheets of paper and then you've got a proper solid white surface underneath and it's not um, distorting your colour choice, if that makes sense. Right, let's get on with it. So, the first thing I'm going to do, so as I said earlier, I was kind of like looking at this and I was thinking, oh, I'm going to go with like five, five skin tones, okay, for the face. But as you're going to see, um, my plan actually changed quite, quite considerably. So, my first colour I'm going to work with is E02. And this is where I'll start to go a lot quieter and just get on with it. So I'm just going to colour in right around the face, round her mask a little there. I'm going to just colour colour block in some of these areas that are skin tone. And on this image, there isn't a huge amount in there. So that was EO2. Next, I'm going to go to EO1 and I'm just going to blend that out a little bit. So I'm just 
going back over and I hope you can see this okay let me just see if I can zoom in a little bit just bear with me okay Oops. there we go that's better okay so um I'm gonna kind of I'm just flicking through the color that I've previously put down and that actually starts to help it blend okay and then again I'm gonna now go to E foro and I'm just gonna blend all of that out with that okay and it's not the perfect blend as you can see it, you know it's very far from being perfect but that's fine so they're my three initial colors now that's as I said before that's looking very warm and rosy quite peachy um so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to E50 and so I'm working from so I've started off in this color range here and now I'm going to go over into this color range here and this will actually help me to neutralize this out so E50 is actually a very neutral kind of brown tone well it's going into it's just a neutral tone so i'm going back over that as if that was e 40 i'm going to call it 40 now i'm trying not to mix these up on my desk as i go so next i'm going to go to e41 and you'll actually start to see this going from being really warm just move that over a little bit more again into more of a um a neutral color palette and i'm going darker each time so this is now e42 and as i said you know there are thousands of people out there um that do great jobs with coloring you know we've got um don govlinski on the polka doodles team she creates fantastic tutorials for you. So that was E42. So now I'm going to go back over with the lighter one out of those three colours, which was the E50 again. And you can see I'm being very light-handed when I'm doing it. You know, I'm not spending loads of time laying lots and lots of ink down because I don't want it to bleed. It, you know, if you keep laying and laying and laying the ink down, it is going to bleed off um so i'm going to let that just dry a little bit i've got a little bit of a lightness going in around her eyes because she's got this mask on you know we kind of don't want the whole of her face really light we want to ha have a little bit of depth so um i think what we'll do next is i'm going to do the hair so i am going to go to yellow red 31 so that's these colors here so i'm going to work with these three colors so I've got yellow, in fact, these two colours, yellow red 31 and yellow red 24. Okay. So this is where you need to work in a way that's comfortable for you. And I hope you can see what I'm doing. So kind of work, what I do is I work in each section of the hair independently. So all I'm doing Hold, hold your pen quite close down so you get a little bit more control over the flicks. And if any of you want to do some proper colouring workshops, I highly recommend Alice Keegan over at Kitten Clouder. Um, she's absolutely fabulous. She gives so much in her, of her knowledge and help to anybody that needs it um you know and she has i think twenty five thousand people in her facebook group so you know if you want a little bit of extra help then go and see alice at king clouder and sign up for some of her amazing classes which is so cheap and there are lifetime classes as well so you can go back keep going back and back so can you see how i was just flicking so it's just one row of flick one set of flicks one layer and then in here and i'm just following the flow of the actual artwork so whether it's one of my images or someone else's image it doesn't matter you need to just color it the same and that usually an artist will put 
these guide these lines here are guides for you to color in so you know up here and it's the follow the flow of the hair so that's one layer and if you wanted to you know some people are quite happy with just doing that that's fine it's entirely up to you how you want to do it so i'm now going to go up a darker color so i'm going up to the yellow red 24. so now i'm going to go back over and this time what i'm doing is i'm actually going to kind of pick out every individual section as i work and the reason i'm doing that is so that i don't overdo it because i don't want to completely color tone the hair and then i'm going to work back and i'm going to come into the sections that i didn't do to start with okay and i'm leaving lots of white space in the middle here but what i'm going to do now is i want to just dif differentiate these sections and some sections will be darker than others because some hair sits behind some hair sits in forward so then i'm going to twist and i like to work on a slant so i'm just doing this how i would normally draw and color i kind of tend to work on a slant so you can see i'm holding my pen really really close so i've got lots of control over those flicks and it's just very very light touches and then i'm going to turn that around the other way and i'm going to flick the opposite way And so in this section, that piece there is actually going behind here and behind here. So this needs to be quite dark in here. So we'll put a little bit more in there. And the same with that there. And the same in here, look. So this piece here is underneath there. So we want that to look like that's going behind as well. And then she's got the crown of her head. And then this is right round the back. So I'm going to actually make that quite dark. And we're going to come back. So, you know, we can keep going. And then this here is also behind the head. And then coming underneath her chin, there's a strap here that isn't actually her chin. It looks like it is, but it's not. So just make sure you catch that or it'll look a bit weird. And then here is going to be dark as well. So just light flicks. And, you know, colouring is supposed to be enjoyable. So, you know, don't get in too much of a twist over it. So look how much better that looks already. And I can see here I've missed some sections. So I'm just going to add a little bit in there. But I don't want to cover up that first colour that we put down. And I'm kind of flicking and curling round to catch the um direction of the hair as i'm going but not trying not to overfill everything so again now you could stop at that point if you wanted to but i now kind of want to get some real um depth of color in there so one um i actually picked out a nice dark brown so I've actually chosen E59 and I'm going to use E59 to add some really nice dark blending in here. But this is a really dark colour. So, you know, this is that dark. So I need to be quite careful with this and not overdo it. So I'm holding my pen really tight so that I, I've got lots of control and I can get really fine flicks And where the hairline is, I want that to be really nice and dark. And also in here, where there's a little bit of shadow. So that's another piece of hair that was sitting behind there. And less is more. You can always come back and add more if you want to. So don't go too mad. So at the end of the day we do want her to have blonde hair so that goes in so 
so it does that. So it does that piece. That one goes round the back of her head. So can you see this is actually starting to create that kind of natural shadowing? And we're going to go behind her shoulder there. Bring a few more in to those sections where we haven't worked it in. And just a little bit behind her elbow. And if you want to, you can flick up a little bit at the bottom. And then we need to not forget her ponytail here. So... And this bit here, which is going to be darker in there. Okay, and I nearly forgot then. I just want to come up here, add a few more in there. And actually, I don't like the way that I've done this here. So I'm going to just put some heavier ones in there. Just try not to have them all, I had them all in a line there. Can you see? They're all sort of in a line. And this is what I was saying about less is more and you can come back if you're not happy. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the YR24 again, which is that mid-tone. And I'm actually going to just add a little bit more of those and what that will actually do is it will also soften that darker color a little bit as well as I go back over it so I'm not blending it I'm just adding some extra flicks just to get a little bit extra depth and anywhere where I've got a lot of so kind of like in there, behind there, I kind of do want to actually blend that in a little bit. If you've gone anywhere where it's a little bit, uh, you went a little bit dark. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this yellow red and I'm going to just put some of this darker brown right on the tip. And now we'll be able to actually get a, a colour in between that's going to actually blend perfectly. So I'm just adding a little bit. If you can see that. So. And that enables us. You know when you don't have the, that perfect colour that you wanted. Which I've discovered today that some of mine. Uh, I need to renew quite a few colours that have not. That have run out or are drying out. And this is also really good. So you can touch it both ways, but I find it's better to put the darker colour on top of the light colour. And then I just twist my pen slightly. And that will actually help. Because you, you're going to get kind of a blend on your actual pen. And as you, as you brush, it actually brushes out anyway. So just hold it on. Don't take too much because it'll go too dark. And it'll just help you to soften some of these areas down a little bit, maybe. If you've got the right colours in between, then obviously just use those. This is quite a subtle mix, so I can probably see it a bit better than you can. Oops, just went over there. Okay, and then... All I'm going to do is just go back to our original light yellow red and if I feel like I need some extra, like there's a little bit in there that's glaring at me, I'm just going to add some extra bits in there. But I, I quite like that as it is, I think. I think that's okay. Quite happy with that. Okay. So how are we doing on time? 24 minutes. Okay. Easy. So I am going to, we're going to do a scrubs next. Uh, in fact, actually, before we do that, let's just do this trolley thing. So what's it called? Uh, an ivy. 
So I've got um, N3 and I'm just going to go over the whole thing, but I'm going to leave some gaps and that just naturally makes it look like it's shiny. Oops. You can see how I can't go, go in the lines anymore. This is why I don't do that much colouring anymore. This is our little IV bag. And I'm just going to go to N5. I think it's N5. Oh no, it's not. It's N8. N8. I've got the wrong lid on there. N5. <laughs> this is my classic thing that I do. What's that? N8. 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 N5. N8. Yeah, make sure you put your tops back on the right things. I'm terrible for doing that. And then I'm just going to add... A little bit of shadow under a hand there, just here behind. Whoops. So I am rushing a little bit. I would, I am being a little bit um a little bit rubbish there. And then I'm gonna go to N1 and just colour that bag. A little bit more to blend it out so it actually looks like it's got something inside it or you know that there's something going on with that bag now another thing that i want to do is i'm also going to go with n1 and i'm going to come in here into the mask and i'm going to actually shade her outfit before i even start so I'm just going to use this. So this is N1 again, so it's neutral one. And I'm just going to add shadow where I want it to be. So if you were doing a, a white uniform, you, you know, you could have a nice clinical white uniform if you wanted to. This is kind of like how I would shade that anyway. So I would kind of like... shade it like that okay and then I'm going to come back in with N3 and remember she's wearing a mask we want it to look like it's going around her face and I'm going to go over her neck with that as well and then under here it's going to be quite dark under her sleeve under here and then under her uniform, so kind of like round the top, you know, tops of her legs. And I want her shoes. Okay, so, you know, you, you might be quite happy with that, just like that. So I'm going to go to BG11, which is a nice pale blue-gray. And now I'm going to actually use that to blend over. All of this so I'm going to leave her sleeves white but her actual scrubs I'm going to color in so this is the the palest color and by putting my shadows in there it means I can get quite a lot of shadow going out on um, and it's actually blending through it's just quite a nice little tip that you can actually do that. Um, so that's BG11. Then I'm going to go to um, BG32. And this is where you really need this colour chart. Because look, BG11, I thought, oh, BG13 is the next colour. But look, BG32 goes in between that. Um, and this is very slightly more, I would say slightly more green. Um, but it's still a lighter shade than this. So um that's kind of the way so the higher the num you know it's a higher number so you would expect that um it's going to be darker but in this case it isn't so let's just color in some of her clothing and again going back over that gray that i've kind of put in earlier You know, it's entirely, the, the thing is, there's there's no right or wrong. And 
it's completely up to you how you if you know if you want to color in sky green that's up to you um there is no right or wrong i'm just going to come back with the bg11 and just blend that in a little bit because there is quite a big difference between those two shades so i'm just gonna come back and i actually like you know some colorists will sit here for hours blending out their strokes but i think it's because i'm because I'm kind of an illustrator, I actually don't mind that the strokes in there to me actually adds um, interest into what you're doing. So now I'm in with uh, BG13, which is that darker colour, and that's actually called mint green, that one. And, I, and so now with that, I'm actually going over those grey areas that I kind of put the grey into and really kind of forcing that into those areas. So again, a little bit around her mask. And back with BG11 to just blend that in nice and seamlessly. Especially on that mask. And then what I'm going to do is, that I hadn't done on, I'd already done this before, but actually I want that mask to have a bit of blue on there. So I'm just going to grab my colour chart here and I'm just going to pick a blue. And I think what we'll do is we'll pick blue O2, if I've got it. Yes, I do. But just before I use it, I'm going to just test it. And actually, that's a bit dark for me. I don't know if I want it that colour. Let's go to blue 01. And this is why it's so... That's better. It's slightly greener. So just to add a little bit of um, something different, I'm going to just colour her mask. And I'm going to go all the way over that with that blue. And it just kind of picks up a slightly slightly different tone and I'm going to do that just on her sleeve and just around the her top there just to give it a little bit of blue because the scrubs are a very specific kind of colour and I just felt like I wasn't getting quite the right colour there I think that's better and right lastly i want to come back to her face so her face is all dried off and this is the other thing as well you need to allow your coloring to dry because everything dries back much lighter than you originally thought it would so what i'm going to do here again is i'm kind of going to come let me see I'm going to come in with E55 and I think I did this before, I'm not sure, but we're going to just, I, I like to have lots of shading and definition in the face. So, because their hair will always be casting shadow and she's got a mask on, so she's definitely got a shadow casting and she's got ears that should sit behind as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back and blend that in with the E40, just so that I don't add any additional colour in there. And I'm going to colour all over that. Okay, and it's still blending out, so I'm going to go back in even a little bit darker. And don't forget about under the neck as well. And this time I'm going to blend that out with E uh, E50, I think I'll go, or E41 I'm going to go to, actually. And that was, if you remember, that was one of the original skin colours that we used. So E41. And I think I might actually go... I'm going to live dangerously and we're going to put a bit of E55 in here. So I'm just going to run that 
in the ears. So I want the ears to sit back. And where her cheeks are, I kind of want that to look like it's a bit rounder and up into her the um parting of her hair. So where's E? What have I used now? E41, there we go. And then blend that back out. So sometimes you need to be a little bit braver than you think you need to be. Okay, that's better. I like that better. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take N5, which is that grey. It's nice warm. Well, it's neutral, but it's still quite a warm neutral. And we're going to run that under the hair, just under that hairline there. And I'm going to put that into the neck as well because I want that neck area to, to just go back. And then again, I'm going to blend that out with the E41 because that's kind of like in the middle. And we've been using that in that area. Okay. And then I'm quite happy with this now. I quite like it. Um, N41, I'm going to let that dry just a second. N5 again. I'm going to just bring that under the hairline so kind of like round the back of the head there let's get some depth going on there and because it's a neutral gray you can actually pull that in and i'm just using it to go in those areas where i could maybe have done to to have a hat added just a little bit more depth um i'm gonna put no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i don't want to mess too much i have a ha habit of messing okay so now i have rv14 and i am gonna take e50 and i'm gonna add RV14 onto E50 and before I do anything I'm going to swatch it off onto there and then I'm just going to dot this in around there so she's got some little rosy cheeks and then once I've wet that area I can add just a little bit more but I'm controlling it really really well by not going in direct with that pen. Okay, you see how she's got a little, little rosy cheek now. And let's, again, just take the excess off here. You don't wanna look in like Aunt Sally. If any anyone outside the UK is watching and has no clue who Aunt Sally is, Aunt Sally was actually a character on a really famous TV show here in the, uh, in the 70s so i'm just going to go back over that and then if you feel like you want a little bit more i think she could do with a little bit more rosy cheeks oh, so cute i hate the aunt sally an aunt sally cheek is when you do this when you when you color your, color your cheek like that please don't do cheeks like that i hate that <laughs> if you want to you can but i i i don't like it and then i'm just gonna Again, add a bit more. And you can, quite often, you can go really quite um, quite intense on the cheek area. And I'm going to go a little bit more than I maybe should because I know it's going to dry back. And often it'll dry back and then I'm disappointed because I didn't get enough in there. And if you want to, what's sometimes quite nice to do as well is just to actually do that and just pull that in from the hairline a bit as well and just adds a little bit of warmth around the headline hairline headline hairline not too much because you don't want to overdo it but it can if you feel like the face is looking a little bit gray or it's not quite right that's quite a nice uh, little technique to do and i'm just gonna finally blend back over that with a double o just to make sure that i've got oops so 
so that I've got all that blended in quite nicely. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is let's go to N1 and we need to just ground her and what she's doing. She's got her little trolley. Don't miss out the bit between her legs in there. And we'll go a little bit darker so that she's actually creating a shadow. And so is this in there. And then I might even go to N8. And then just blend that back out. Soften it down a bit. I might have gone a bit mad there. And then back to the N1 just to blend that back around again. And, you know, you can go over that. It doesn't matter. But then both the, the IV unit and her have got a little shadow. And if you really want to, she could do with maybe a bit of shadow around here. And again, back up into her trousers a bit, maybe. It's up to you. Just feel like I've lost a bit of definition in there around the arm. And this is where you start to faff about. And if you're not careful, you can actually mess it up. Okay. I'm quite happy with that. I like her. I think that's worked out pretty good. So I hope you really like that and that you found it quite useful with some hints and tips. If you love this image, this is actually called the Winnie Heroes range and you can actually um, get this currently for a limited time free of charge. It's a printable bundle. Um, just to give you another look, this is one that I sort of did earlier using the same colors, just maybe slightly different. So this one's had maybe half an hour just to dry. Um, but I actually prefer the one we've just done. It's got a lot more colour in it. It's a lot more vibrant. And it just, you know, have a go. I hope that's, um, I hope you've enjoyed that. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for joining me. Bye.